Hello everyone. Today I would like to talk about the lessons that I learned spending time in the developing world over the past eight years. As a white-skinned Western man, I'm in great demand for money, resources and security. I could lift an entire family and half a village out of poverty if I was so inclined to be taken advantage of. I refused this role too many times to count. The demand for me as a white-skinned Western man is much greater than the supply, which leads to a lot of incoming messages, phone calls and hand-grabbing from bar girls when walking down the street. This is easily turned into sexual encounters at very low prices. Dating is also much easier than in the Western world. Sex workers, or bar girls, use love and compliments to get money from us Western men. We go from the role of servant in the Western world to the role of king in the developing world. This goes to the heads of many a Western man, including to my own head at times. Foreigners can't own land in Thailand or the Philippines. We can't own more than 49% of a business in Thailand. The business environment is heavily tilted in favour of the locals and it's not an even playing field. Proceed with extreme caution, if at all. Keep your assets in the Western world with your income from those assets coming to you whilst you're living over there. Rent everything and everyone. Everyone who tried to scam me in Thailand lost. I really heard it all as well. Sick family, mother, father, sister, brother, child, sick water buffalo, house blew down, house flooded, gambling debts, Thai mafia is after me. The police are after me. I'm arrested. I'm in prison. On and on it went from so many people. I helped only one. The negative view and treatment us Western men get from feminists is wrong, and many of their views and ideas are deeply flawed, despite being accepted as being politically correct. Western men are considered, and rightfully so, as the greatest catch possible to a poor family in the developing world. Feminists didn't take into account that if they treated enough of us men badly enough, we would just skip the country and have relations with younger, hotter women, or whoever, that are easily replaced due to the massive demand from Western men in the developing world and the corresponding low supply of us. There is a large market for foreign brides from Thailand and the Philippines in the Western world but no market whatsoever for white-skinned Western women in the developing world. I'm still reflecting on this and what it means in a market-based economy, but I think that it speaks volumes. There is a large demand for the locals to be brought to the first world at a Western man's expense. I was offered 40% of every dollar one person would earn in Australia if only I would sign a visa for them and bring them to Australia at my risk and my expense. Men that are considered losers in the Western world by many are getting around with beautiful women in the developing world. As a middle-class Western man, I was pitched to by absolute stunners 15 years younger than me that wouldn't even glance at me if they were here in Australia, I might add, even when I was at my peak in terms of looks back in the day. Getting pitched to as an older guy just screams red flag. Almost every relationship between a Western man and a Western woman fails after less than a year together in the developing world. All due to the constant incoming interest the man receives from younger, hotter, possible partners. It's just irresistible. The equivalent is being in a place full of high-powered, rich, successful, wealthy men that are willing to marry your woman and whisk her off to a life of privilege and security. How long would most women last? Warning, do not ever bring a Western female partner with you to the developing world. What was my role in the developing world? How was I seen by the locals? What did they want from me? Resource provider, walking ATM, money. How is this different from the first world? It's not, except the risks are larger and the partners are much younger. And the experience is better. What about when a local says, I love you? 
substitute the word need for love and you will be right 100% of the time. 100% of the time. When a young, attractive person actually does make it to the Western world, they are in an environment full of walking ATMs. The amount of money they can possibly make as sex workers in Australia, for example, is literally obscene. The really big opportunity is not opening a bar in Thailand and competing with hundreds of other bars. It's bringing Thais to Australia and opening a chain of Thai-style bars locally. Am I a cynical man? Yes. But why am I a cynical man? Experience on the street. Lots of experience. Book smarts and street smarts. My time in the developing world I spent listening, watching, observing, writing, interacting with the locals, discussing and so on. Am I wrong about any of this? Well, I do work in a scientific field. What does a scientist do? We ask questions, do background research, we construct a hypothesis, we test with experiments, we troubleshoot, we carefully check our steps and our setup, we analyse data, we draw conclusions, we see if our results align with our hypothesis, we ask new questions, we form a new hypothesis, we experiment again and again, and finally, we, communi we communicate our results. I'm the pretender, over and out.